the Happy Scientist Podcast. Each episode is designed to make you more focused, more productive, and more satisfied in the lab. You can find us online at bitesizebio.com slash happy scientist. Your hosts are Kenneth Vogt, founder of the executive coaching firm Vera Claritas, and Dr. Nick Oswald, PhD, bioscientist, and founder of Bite Size Bio. Hello and welcome to the Happy Scientist podcast from Bite Size Bio. If you want to become a happier, healthier and more productive scientist, you are in the right place. I'm Nick Oswald, the founder of BiteSizeBio.com and with me is the driving the force of this podcast, Mr. Kenneth Vogt. I've worked with Ken for over seven years now with him as my business mentor and colleague and I knew that his expertise could help a lot of researchers. Along the way, I'll pitch in with points from my personal experience as a scientist, but mostly we'll hear from Ken on principles that will help shape you for a happier and more successful career. Today, we will be discussing how to elicit the help of others. So let's bring in the man himself. Ken, how's things going for you today? Going great. How are you? Good. I'm good. So last week, we talked about going your own way. And here we are this week talking about eliciting help from others. So you got to wonder, did... Did What's last week on? not count? <laughs> <laughs> well, to, and so allow me to say then that going your own way was not about going your going alone. It was about being a leader and about being free to choose your own path. But once you've chosen that path, once you've decided to lead in a certain direction, you're going to need help uh, if you really want to get things done. And it's, this is not to say that, you know, you're not enough or, or there isn't, you know, there isn't any way to do things on your own because there is, but you have the opportunity to get help and you can multiply what you can accomplish if you can have the assistance of other people. And, and that assistance can come from all kinds of directions. It can come from people who are working for you and basically, you know, they have to help you. That's what they're being paid to do. Or it can come from your peers who may not have to directly have to help you, but it's in their best interest to be a team player. Or it can come from the people that you work for because you need the support of those who have access to the resources or have their, have their uh, hands on the purse strings. And you can also elicit help from the people that are outside of your, your normal chain because there's plenty of people out there that are willing to help and are capable of helping or are, um, are personally motivated to help. And it just comes down to you, whether or not you will, correct, you will collect those resources and bring them in to help you get done what you gotta do. So, you, you know, if you've bothered to have any kind of vision at all about what you wanna get done, and you're excited about it, you're gonna realize, I don't wanna stop at only using my own strength or my own energy to get this done. I'm gonna wanna, pull in every possible resource I can to make make this successful, to make this bigger, to make this better. Um, you know, however you're, you're approaching it, it's, you're gonna be excited to bring in other people. So the problem you may have is you may look back and go, you know, there've been times when people have helped me, but there have been times when I really, really, really needed help and I just didn't get it. Or maybe you're someone who says, you know, I rarely get helped by anybody. Nobody wants to help me. I don't know what the problem is. You know, what's wrong with these people? I need help. <laughs> you know, um, for others of you, you'll say, well, you know, actually, I do like getting help from other people. Um, it's just I don't always get the help I need. It's like I I see people willing to help, but they they don't do what I need, or I'm not getting the right help. I, there are people that are helping me, but I need help from other people. So we're gonna. We're going to deconstruct all of that and, and look at how you can elicit help from people no, no matter what they are. Because sometimes we may be intimidated. We may think, I can't, I can't ask my boss's boss for help. Or I can't ask this very busy peer of mine for help. Or I'm already working my, you know, my direct reports to the bone. I just can't ask for any more from them. So... We're gonna we're gonna get clear about how this all works because because there's there's plenty of opportunity there's a lot of low hanging fruit out there so no matter what state you're in there's more you can do 
Would it be fair to say that there, peop- there will be people out there who don't either don't want to ask for help or don't kind of realize how much that of, help, of a helpful strategy that is? Absolutely. And, you know, if you already are of the mindset, like, man, I hate asking for help. That, that's something to examine about yourself. Like, why am I so resistant to being the social animal that I am as a human being? Because uh, it's not, frankly, it's not natural. It is normal for us to seek help. And if, if you feel like you're an outsider in that regard, it's time to do a little self-examination and, and a little assessment of like, why, am I, why don't I want to ask for help? Am I afraid to give up uh, credit? Am I, do I feel embarrassed or ashamed? Do I feel unworthy? You know, examine those things for yourself and, and, and get clear that you have asked for help in your life at some points. And maybe you've asked for help and, and been denied it, and so now you don't want you don't want to have that experience again. But it's good to get some experience with that, where where you ask for help in simple situations where where you know there's you don't really have any skin in the game, and if people say no, it won't hurt. And and you you'll be surprised. It's the little things: asking somebody to hold the door, asking somebody to pass the sugar. You know, people will do stuff. They will do stuff even if they don't care about you, because because it's part of their social structure too. They realize they got to give back to the group. So give people a chance to do that. You know, there's, a, there's an adage that says there's more joy in giving than there is in receiving. So don't deny people the joy of giving. <laughs> give, give them a chance to give and, and you'll find that they're going to they're gonna generally want to. I think there's a, there's also an adage, Ken, I can't remember the exact wording, but something like you should always surround yourself with people who are better at doing, uh, better than you at doing the things that they need done. So you have your you you have your vision. And so say it's in your research um, uh, project and you, you need to do some microscopy and you're, you're okay at microscopy, but you have, you know, someone who is, who is better get their help and then that will move it along faster. And that's in everyone's best interests. It's in their interest because they get the joy of giving back, then you owe them as well. But also it means that your research project moves along faster, which is better for everyone. And, um, you know, I, from personal experience, the reason Ken is here is this very principle uh, on this podcast, because I, you know, I started Bite Size Bio as a scientist writing stuff about science got it so far and then I just hit a wall. I didn't know what to do next about making it into I think a business that could um that could sustain itself. And that and so I looked for someone who was better at that than me and that's where you that's where you came in, Ken. Yeah. Sure. And and I hearkening back to to when this began here with Nick, Nick was pretty sensitive about about asking for this help. He he wasn't real comfortable with it. And you know so I had to I had to make sure that I, I made it comfortable for him to be able to ask. Now, now you're on, you know, we're discussing this from the other side right now. People may not always make it easy for you, but it's, it's something to keep in mind that it's, it's so important to do. If, and by the way, when people ask you for help, help them. <laughs> but we're, we're going to get into that a little bit later. So, so, so hang in there. I just but right want- now, let's talk about why people would help you. Can I just say one thing before you jump into that, Ken? And that's about, uh, I said that I, you know, it's about realizing that you need help. Because for me, I, I think I, I want a bit of focus on that because that was a thing for me. And um, I, I said that, you know, I was running Bite Size Bio and I hit a wall with, uh, with what I was able to hit a ceiling. And uh, that's when I got you involved. But the reason I got you involved was because I literally hit the wall very hard. And it took that pain to make me realize, realize, you know, in terms of stress and and uh, and so on, that I was causing myself by trying to do it all myself and uh, doing something that I wasn't really best suited for myself, or, or that I wasn't experienced enough with myself. Um, uh, and it took the pain of trying to do that and then hitting the wall mentally to uh, realize that I needed help. And so I would that that's why I think this is a really important topic because. Part of it is not just about how to get the help, as as the title suggests. It's to realize, to put that in your own working practices, that you look around for solutions other than you, and you build a network of people who can help you to ultimately get where you want to go faster. Sure. 
Yeah, it comes down to humility, you know, being to, to ask for help. I mean, we've talked about that in a couple of past episodes. We talked about it in uh, the Siren Song of Control of episode 23. We talked about it in The Power of Gratitude in episode 26. So hopefully you've already internalized that stuff and you realize, okay, I am going to ask for help when I need help because it's it's just the right thing to do. And it's the thing that works too. This is This is a very pragmatic thing to do. So, speaking of pragmatism, let's talk about pragmatism from those who might help us and how, how it is we could, we could interest them in helping us. And, and it's, it's quite simple to think about it. It's like, what's in it for them? What's their self-interest in this? And not your self-interest. You're probably pretty clear on your self-interest, but get clear on their self-interest. Think about what would they gain if they helped me? And, and if you can't come up with anything, well, then you better build some gains into your requests. And, and think, about, think about it this way, too. These are requests. Requests aren't always granted. So you got to make your request for assistance enticing enough. And you think, well, you know, for the people that work for me, they have to do what I tell them to do. Yeah, that's true. But they only have to do it to the level that the box gets checked that they that they did what they were told. They don't have to do a great job. They don't have to do what you really need. They just have to be able to say they did something. So you got to make it in their self-interest to do the thing you really want done. And there's always something for somebody to gain in in helping someone else. And it could be you know it could be direct things like like say somebody's working for you. Well, you know they're going to get paid, <laughs> so that they're going to keep their job. This is great. Your peers, it's not the same. You know, they don't, they don't have that. Your boss doesn't have that. But they have different things. So with your peers, it may be, it's an opportunity for them to get credit for something. So you can share the limelight with them, or even you can even get it entirely to them. Let them be the winner of, of credit in a certain case, because it gets you something that you want. You know, obviously, make sure that the trade-offs are worth it for you. But you're going to find plenty of times that getting credit all the time yourself isn't actually all that valuable. Giving away credit sometimes is a really powerful thing and it's a very motivating thing to other people. And if they can get some credit, they may be willing to, to give you far more help than, than you might even ask for. Another thing you can offer people is protection. So you, know, you can imagine there, there are situations that are political, there are situations that are now, I mean, internal office politics, you know, um, there are situations where somebody needs to be able to demonstrate that they're being a valuable member of the team and you're giving them an opportunity to be able to have that and to get some protection for themselves that keeps them on a project, that keeps them in their job, that keeps the grant open, you know, whatever it is that's, that's going on. So if you can find a way to help people get protection from helping you, you, then you're more likely to get that help. And then finally, in any case, no matter what they do is, hey, I owe you one. They're, they're, they are pocketing some future benefit that, that perhaps they can get help from you in the future on something. And the help might be something that takes your time, but sometimes it's just a matter of you'll share your influence or you will lend your credibility to something in the future. So, I mean, you might be able to get something that gets where you get a, a lot of time from somebody and all you're going to have to do is share some of your reputation in the future. Um, and, you know, you can weigh that. Obviously, with some people, you don't, you know, I don't want to I don't want to be a reference for certain people. But there are other people that I know I'm going to always be comfortable being a reference for them. So I know that that allowing them to bank that future benefit is is a good deal for me. So if you really consider the self-interest of the individual that you're asking for, for help from, you may find that you have a lot more, more power to get them to help you. And this is true whether there's a subordinate or a peer or your boss or your boss's boss, you know, or somebody outside of, of your, you know, your chain of command. Everybody's got self-interests 
it's not that hard to figure out what they are. You just have to bother to, you know, walk a mile in their moccasins and go, well, what would this person need? What would, what would be valuable to them? I paused for a moment to see if Nick wanted to add anything yeah, else. Yeah, I, I, I was going to start saying something. That's probably why you heard it. But then I <laughs> thought that maybe you're about to go on to it. But I guess that you're talking about here, you know, when you're, when you're looking at their self-interest, you're looking at where you're starting from zero currency, if you like. You haven't prepared... Well, I can see you're going to talk about that from the notes. You haven't prepared the <laughs> ground in advance. All right. Okay, I'll let you carry on. I was just okay. going to say what you were going to say, I think. <laughs> All right, so I want to introduce a concept here about, about what we're doing here of transactions. You know, sometimes... I want, I want to differentiate transactions from giving. You might think I'm asking people to give to me. And why well, giving is expensive. You know, it's, it is expensive. But transactions are not expensive. Transactions are of equal value or in most cases, a, a good quality transaction, both sides feel like they're getting more than they're giving. And so the difference between transactions and giving Giving is that it's a it's just a one one sided thing, a non dual thing. It doesn't it doesn't have another side. I just give because I want to give. And if you're asking somebody to just give to you, with no particular trade off, no return, it's it can be harder to sell that um, to get somebody interested in that. But transactions, we do transactions all day every day. You know, from as simple as it was worth that five bucks to get that latte and you know, and have somebody else make it for me. And of course, other people look at that transaction and go, five dollars for a cup of coffee, that's nuts. I'd never do that. Well, okay, fine. Transactions have to make sense for the people involved in the transaction. But they don't have to make sense to anybody else. So, you know, depending on who you're dealing with, some people are gonna need X to help, you know, to be willing to help you, and other people are gonna need Y. And there may not even be any crossover with certain individuals. Other people, it's like, you know, I've got this universal thing. Everybody's going to want this. And then here's the special thing that's going to be appealing to some people. So, you know, take a look at what you have available to trade. And, you know, because that's all this is. It's a, it's just a transaction. I, I need some help. I'm willing to give X for that help. And make sure you're willing. You know, it's got to be, it's got to be worthwhile to you, too. So... Giving thought to a transaction means giving thought to what they find valuable and giving thought to what you find to be valuable. And you do that. There are situations, you know, uh, I don't know if we've talked about this before or not. We may have a, about, about giving where we just give in a, in a totally non-dualistic fashion without any consideration to another side of this purely for the joy of giving. But this is not one of those situations. We're not asking people for that. It's kind of an altruistic thing to ask. And, you know, granted, there are people in, in our circles sometimes that altruism is part of their nature, and they are getting something out of that. They get virtue out of that. They get to feel like they're a good person, and, that, and that's something that they care about. Well, all right, fine. fine. The, what we want to do here, though, is not manipulate people and not take advantage of people. And the reason we don't want to do that isn't because you can't get a result that way, because you definitely can get a result that way. The problem is the cost is too high. At some point, you start to get a reputation for, for being someone who takes advantage of other people. That That is extremely expensive. So even if your leaning is to go that way, I want you to take a look at your own self-interest and realize that that reputation you don't want. It's, it's too costly. So even though you want what you want, you know, you got to... You got to rein in your inner demons a little there and realize, okay, from in my own best interest, I just can't be, I can't be avaricious about this. I can't be greedy. I got to, I've got to recognize that other people see my motivations too. You know, we, we'd like to think our motivations are all completely hidden, but the fact is most of us are wearing them on our sleeves and everybody knows what we're up to and why we're up to it. So, so just presume people know it's, that what's in the depths of your heart and they know your 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 darkest inclinations and and operate accordingly <laughs> it's interesting because what you're talking about here in a, in a wider 
more zoomed out sense is creating a a flow of good feeling if you like you know so that you know when someone gives to you it feels good for them because they you know whether it's just because they know how to give without condition and it feels good to them or because they're getting something back in return um or you, you know what whatever way it needs to be done it is creating a good feeling rather than just forcing what you want to get forcing what you you know the outcome you want by as you say manipulation or whatever because then that stops the flow of that so then you, it's more difficult to get it next time that's an interesting way to look at it actually because it, it often feels it like that manipulation side approach manipulative approach doesn't have a cost but it does because it kind of just takes all of the energy out of that transaction or, or you know it's not necessarily a transaction but it takes all of the energy out of that flow of giving and i think that science in general is quite good scientists in general are quite good at realizing that um that giving to other people is a kind of is, is a necessity in 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 a professional sense um but it's also uh you know it's all it's also a good thing to do for a kind of networking almost you know you the more you can give the more you can get back I think people are generally quite good at re realizing that maybe more than they would be in like say more, more than people would be in kind of day-to-day -day life but I think it's quite good to point out these principles of why it's like that and why it's important to um to maintain that good feeling and good intention so that then you get better and better at it because we all know people who are you know really great networkers uh, or have a great network of people that they can draw upon and who you know they they're giving and receiving all the time and you know those are powerful people exactly and we all have and you know putting ourselves on the other side of this we all have people that you know if if sandy asks me for help i will drop everything to help but if chris asks for help i'm gonna have to do the math first you know and it may be the same request but but for one person we're more willing well we want to be that person we want to be that person that that people are are gonna gonna be most willing to do whatever it is we ask uh, in any given situation. You know that, and we'll we'll talk about that in just a second. How to be that person? But well, in fact, we'll talk about it now. We're gonna start off with how do you be that charming person? Well, you do it with charisma, and we all have charisma. Now, if charisma is a new topic to you as a listener to this podcast. That means you have not listened to some of our foundational podcasts that, that Nick talks about every week. So episodes seven, eight, and nine are talking about charisma factors. And I promise you, you have some. And you want to know which ones they are. So you should go back and listen to those episodes and learn about that. Now, the only point of having charisma would be if you have some kind of vision. If you don't have any kind of vision for what you'd like to get done, like we talked about in the last broadcast, then then why bother applying charisma? But if you have a vision and you have charisma, you can get people to help you to realize your vision and you can get them on board with that vision. And it, you know, it's the kind of thing too where maybe what you're asking people is hard or it's costly to them. But if, if it's an exciting thing, if it's, if it's something they're going to find valuable, well, now you're far more likely to get them on board to help you with it. I can give you an example of that, actually. Again, bite-sized bio. And I didn't realize this is what was happening at the time, but having worked with you and looked through all these charisma factors and all that stuff, one of the, my main charisma factors uh, is, when, is, is that I'm is when I'm passionate about something, passionate about something. And so I was very passionate about the concept of bite-sized bio from the beginning, about the idea of creating a place where um, scientists could share uh, advice and resources that would help each other. And, you know, you know me, I, I'm Scottish. We don't have, we are not, we're not charming in our own, you know, you know, in a kind of, in the, in the, uh, or persuasive. We don't tend to be that sort of persuasive in the kind of traditional sense. But it worked for me because I was really passionate about this and that happens to chime with my charisma factor. And so I was able to get lots of people to help me 
just for for no reason other than that they were they got as excited about bite size bio as I did when we were starting it off, and yeah, so so and that was you know I didn't have any other country I couldn't pay people to do it in the beginning I couldn't you know there was no, I didn't have the you know the the classic charms or anything like that but people got excited about it so that that's what put a lot of the that's what brought in a lot of the energy that got bite size bio off the ground. Right, and different people have different kinds of charisma, you know. I'm obviously an American, and one of my charisma factors is I'm commanding. And, you know, that probably is pretty obvious from just listening to this podcast. That's that's just the nature that I have. Well, my being commanding is one of the reasons why we have this podcast. I needed help. You, you wouldn't be shocked how many people are behind the scenes on this thing. I needed it to get done, and I started telling people I needed it to get done, <laughs> and they came along. Nick came along, because <laughs> that's the other thing. I needed access to an audience. Well, Nick has this beautiful audience of, of scientists, and, and you know he recognized there was a great need here. I recognized from my standpoint, so it, it all came together, There's a, and between us, we have a vision, too, because I had a vision about it, but then Nick has a different vision about it a complimentary vision about it that that really enhanced it. So, you know, it was good for both of us. So, I want to let's let's dig into this thing that Nick was alluding to earlier that that if you want people to help you, you should have started yesterday. <laughs> and you know, if you didn't start yesterday, don't worry about it. You can start today, but the idea is prepare the gr- the ground in advance. Make people want to help you. Well, how do you do that? Well, you know, uh, it'd be great if you could travel back in time and 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 have done things for other people and got them excited about your vision before. Well, maybe you can't do that. But you know what? Maybe you can. Maybe you can look back and realize, you know what? Actually, I have prepared the ground. And so all I need to do is remind them of that. Remind them that, you know, I remember when I helped you on this and remember when, when we we talked about this and we were excited about it. Well, the time has come to do it. So, so I need your help now. So when, when you do that, that inventory of who have, who's helped me in the past or, or who have I, who have I encouraged in the past? Who have I already um, made an investment with in the past? Well, now maybe it's the time to cash in. Now is the time to go. Okay. I, I need to remind him of that. And don't be afraid to remind them. I helped you before, or I stood by you before. Because you know, the help might have been I did work for you, or the help might have been I was I was standing up standing up for you in a set in a setting, or I I was I was waving the flag saying, Hey, Bob Bob really did great over here, or Sally really did great over there. You know, call those chips in. And you know, understand that if you're calling in chips, you're cashing them in and it's that's over. So make sure it's worth it. You know, if it, is this the moment to cash in that chip? Sometimes the answer is no. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm gonna hold that one back until it really matters. But there are times when you know when you are your back is against the wall and boy, you need a savior. You really need some help right now. And it is sure great to have some some banked goodwill with other people that you can get them to drop what they're doing to help you in this emergency because they know you've done that for them before or you set it up in such a way that they believe that you're going to do that for them in the future. I guess it goes back to what you were talking about earlier there, Ken, about if you can actually just get your head around the idea of just giving, you know, being that person that's helpful, regardless of, you know, regardless of whether you're getting anything back, then if that just becomes a habit, then you bank so much um, goodwill that that you will be you will naturally have a, a big pool of people that you can draw upon to help you, but then that you know it's not even as transactional as that. You can enjoy being a helpful person, and and then enjoy the help from people that comes back to you. And and everyone it floats everyone's what's that? The rising tide floats everyone's boat or something like that. Yeah, rising you know, tide floats all boats. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it, it's good for everyone because, you know, if you just look at it in science and scientific research in itself, the more people help each other to get up, you know, on how to, you know, on a specific technique or whatever that they're, that they're, um, that they're expert on, 
the, slow, the, the faster the learning curve is for all of science. And again, that's one of the concepts behind bite size. And, um, you know, so what's wrong, you know, what's to, why would you want to play small when that's, uh, and, and kind of um, ration the, the amount of help you're willing to give people uh, in that sense, but it also works in a personal sense as well. That's just, I think the the the, the, per, the professional examples particularly stark, especially for scientists. The, spe, the the professional kind of value proposition for that, the reason why you'd want to do it. Um, but of course, it carries through to um, to personal life as well. And you know, I think that scientists, as you pointed out, in general, there there's a bit of altruism built into the folks that are doing it. You know, I come from an engineering background and we can be just painfully pragmatic and all about efficiency. And and if you're if you have that kind of leaning like I do, like well, doing things now for other people with no known potential payoff in the future, how, how do I do that? I mean that that, that how did that comes at a cost and, and I'm busy, you know, I do do I really have time or resources to, to squander in such a way? Well, yeah, you do. So, and the way you can do it, even if you're somebody that's, that's got that efficiency hang up and I'll, I'll put myself in that category. Well, it's that I just, I just take a portion of my time, a portion of my resources, and I just allocate them that way. It's just, that's just built into my personal system. I've got this 5%, this 10% that I'm going to give away. That's just what's going to happen. And so when it's happening, it's like, I'm not bothered by that because I, I didn't steal it from something else. It was already assigned to that. It was, it was already, I've already put that into the budget, whether it's time wise or, or resource wise. And so it, it's an investment I, I expected to make. And there's plenty of other investments I've, I've made in myself, even as an efficiency nut. You know, why do I keep reading books? Why do I go to Why do I go to seminars? Well, well, why did I used to go to seminars? Well, hopefully we'll be back at that again <laughs> uh, in the future. You know, because it was part of. I, I realized I needed professional development in my life at all times. It's just part of it. Well, if I bank things for professional development, I can bank things for call it professional altruism. That I'm gonna I'm gonna develop my reputation here as a guy that you can count on, somebody that will help you. And that's the kind of person other people want to help. So you know, I, it's, it's in your I, best interest. I guess if you need that motivation, then looking at it like uh, as a transaction is that the more that you give, the more that uh, as an investment, the more that you're likely to be able to get back from other people. If you want to look at it that way, um, it, it's not it's not time lost. Put it that way. In the same way that going to a professional seminar is not time lost, it's an yeah, investment. Exactly. So that's it. So we want you to to go your own way, but we also want you to get help because because I want you we want you to be able to multiply your capability. We want you to multiply your results, and you're not going to be able to do that alone. So you got to bring you got to bring others along with you. Yeah, it's it's a it's kind of that the, the go your own way concept is kind of about being your a leader in whatever specific thing you want to you know, little, uh, whatever specific journey you want to create or, or whatever specific thing you want to build. And this is about how to um, help other people to do that, to, to help other people to uh, build whatever they're building, but also get other get those people to help you as well. So everyone yeah. wins. Now that you're going your own way, get some help going that way. Yeah. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> yep, that's right. Well, that's about all I've got for now, Nick. How about you? Uh, that's I think that that's a great topic, especially for science. We know it's all about collaboration and science and so on, but it still gets a bit sticky and a bit transactional. And I think that the more people can realize how much of a virtuous, virtuous circle that is, that no matter what way you look at it, it's a good thing to do. And it's and it's a, a profitable thing to do that, um, you know, the, the, the more that people can realize that, the better it will be. So an another great topic that you came up with, Ken. Well done. <laughs> thank you, and thank you for your additions to it. Yeah, yeah, you you definitely brought the flavor of uh, the view from from the lab. That's the idea. 
So that brings us to the end. And I, this gives me a good, Ken mentioned the Charisma Factors um, podcasts. It's really, if you haven't looked back at these uh, early episodes that we did that cover the core concepts, um, episodes one to nine, I would, it's worth going back and seeing. I mean, the, what was Charisma Factors when they were seven, eight, and nine, I think? Seven, eight, and nine, yeah. Uh, though that's a great concept. It just helps you to understand what buttons you can push to get results like we talked about today. Um, so go back and listen to those if you get the if you get the chance. In fact, just go back and listen to them. Uh, episodes one to nine. Uh, make the chance. Make the chance. <laughs> uh, and then if you want to um, to hook up with us on Facebook, we are at facebook.com forward slash the happy scientist club. So please join us there and say hello. And so that's all for today. Thank you again, Ken, for another great talk. Thank you. And we'll see you all next time. Happy Scientist is brought to you by Bite Size Bio, your mentor in the lab. Bite Size Bio features thousands of articles and webinars contributed by hundreds of PhD scientists and scientific companies who freely offer their hard-won wisdom and solutions to the Bite Size Bio community.